Okay, begin by removing the red central slider switch with a spudger tool. Gently wedge it underneath and lift it up. It may feel a little bit tight, don't worry, you're not going to break it. Using the same technique, we'll remove the right dial, just wedge it underneath and gently lift and twist and that should pop off quite easily. If you have the rubber side grips attached, go ahead and slide them off and if there's anything else attached to the radio, remove them now. Flip the transmitter face down so you can access the battery door and battery. With the spudger, gently dislodge the battery from the battery bay. That allows you to gain access to the connector. Using a pair of tweezers, gently wiggle the connector back and disconnect the battery from the transmitter. Now that the battery is removed, we can begin to take the back cover off. You'll notice that the back cover is held by four Phillips head screws. They are all the same size, so go ahead now and unscrew those four screws. Once you've removed all the screws, resist the temptation to simply lift the back cover off. You need to be careful and use a spudging tool and gently wiggle around the perimeter of the back cover to loosen it first. You'll notice I'm using little small twisting motions to gently loosen the case from the top to the bottom. Take your time loosening the back case. You might experience a little difficulty near the left and right slider switches. That's because they're attached to both the top and bottom part of the shell. If that's the case, simply push the slider down off the back cover. Now, grabbing the bottom of the shell, gently lift and pivot it to a 90 degree position. From here, you will notice a coaxial cable from the back cover to the RF board is connected. That is a 900 megahertz antenna, which sits inside the handle. Go ahead and remove that now. Once you've disconnected that coaxial cable, you're free to remove the back cover from the rest of the transmitter. Inspecting the back cover, you'll notice four Phillips head screws. They are what hold the handle which couples as the 900 MHz antenna into place. If you want to remove that, simply remove those four Phillips head screws and gently pull the handle off. This is what the handle looks like once you've removed it from the back cover. Next, you're going to label the remaining four coaxial cables, each of which corresponds to a particular antenna of the transmitter. The RF board also marks where each coaxial antenna cable is supposed to be placed. Once you're confident of cable placements, go ahead and remove each coaxial cable carefully with your spudger tool, one by one, being very careful not to damage the connection on the RF board. Clear the coaxial cables away from the center of the transmitter so you have access to the external con board and the RF board. Now we're going to remove the external connectivity board and the RF board together as one unit. And we'll do that by first removing the four Phillips head screws and the two spaces on the left and the right of the external con board. As you begin to take off the top Phillips head screws of the connectivity board, you'll notice that they are longer than the bottom ones. Make sure you take note so that there's no confusion when you reassemble the board. Go ahead and do that now. With your tweezers, gently remove the left spacer from between the external board and the RF board, and then remove the right spacer. You'll note the space is just a little black cylinder. The external connector board is now free. We need to take the two top screws off the RF board so we can remove both those boards at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just an aside as you're unscrewing, what you'll notice on the X20 series transmitters is that the logic boards stack one on top of each other a little bit like Lego does. So bearing that in mind, we'll start to disconnect the RF and external con board. To remove these two boards as one unit, place your spudger underneath the RF board and gently lift up with your spudger and it should easily pop off. You're now free to remove the RF and X con board. 
Taking a little inspection of those two boards, you'll notice that they are held together by a serial cable. There is no need to disconnect them. Here is a schematic for your reference of screw positions and sizes for each socket. I'll include a schematic for every logic board removed off the transmitter for your reference. Next, we're presented with the main board and that is held together by these six screws. They are all the same size, so go ahead and unscrew them first. Now using a pair of tweezers, you're going to disconnect the audio speaker JST connector from the main board. Don't pull it from the cable, use tweezers and gently twist it off. While we're here, we'll also disconnect the FPC ribbon cable from the keyboard with a spudger tool. Be careful, pull the tab back gently and remove the FPC cable. With your spudger tool, gently wedge underneath the bottom right of the main board and gently lift and twist. Do the same for the left hand side, wedge it underneath, gently lift and twist and the main board should pop up. Now that the board is free, go ahead and remove that from the transmitter. With the main board removed, we are now presented with the PWR board. But before that, here is a schematic of the main board and the screw and fastener positions. Moving to the PWR board, you'll be removing the gimbal harness from the bottom and the switch harnesses from the top. To do this, don't pull on the wires, instead coax the plastic enclosures with a spudger tool or tweezers and gently lift them out of the socket. Next, you're going to unscrew the six Phillips head screws, two of which are hidden underneath the keyboard FPC ribbon cable. Go ahead and do that now. The last thing holding the PWR board to the rest of the transmitter is that top FPC cable, which is the LCD ribbon cable, which we will unclip next. To remove the LCD flex cable, simply pull back on the tab very carefully and gently and then you can pick up the PWR board and gently lift it away from the transmitter. Once again for your reference, a schematic of the power board and the screw positions. As we work towards removing the left and right gimbal, label them for your reference. Once you've labelled them, grab a pair of tweezers and remove all four trim switches. They come off quite easily and create more room for you to be able to unscrew the gimbals. Looking more closely at the left and right gimbal, they are held down by four screws. Simply remove them and you'll be able to lift the gimbal away from the transmitter. Thank you. 
Once you've removed the screws, just gently grab from underneath the gimbal and remove both gimbal and metal ring that holds the gimbal in place. Do this for the left and the right gimbal. Take your time. These parts look a lot more daunting than they really are. It's simply four Phillips head screws and a little bit of patience and you'll be able to coax them off very easily. For your reference, a schematic of the gimbals and the screw positions for the gimbals. You'll notice that the grooves are quite wide. That allows you to adjust the gimbal a little bit to the left and to the right. Now it's time to tackle the keyboard, but before that, let's unseat the haptic engine from its groove. And then we're going to unscrew seven Phillips head screws from the keyboard and simply lift the keyboard out with a spudger tool. So let's go ahead and do that now. Like before, here is a reference for your keyboard and screw and fastener positions. Here, all the screws are the same size. Now it's time to tackle the back cover of the LCD, and you'll notice that's held down by two screws. So let's go ahead and remove those two screws now. To remove the back LCD cover, gently grab the bottom lip and pull it back and towards you and gently lift up. You will notice that there are two tabs at the top that hold the screen in place. Gently lift it away and pull it off. Looking at the LCD back cover, you'll notice two holes, and if you look at the frame where the LCD cover sits, you'll see two tabs. This gives you the intuition as to how that cover sits on the frame. For your reference, a schematic of the LCD back cover, screws and fasteners. Next, we need to remove this bracket, and that is held down by two screws. So let's go ahead and unscrew those two screws. Now with your spudger tool, wedge underneath the right hand side of the bracket and twist up, same with the left hand side, and that bracket should easily pop off. You should then easily be able to remove that bracket. Here's the bracket schematics with the two screws. The final logic board left is the LCD driver board and that is held down by two tabs. So gently pull on the left tab and gently pull up with your spudger on the upper left side of the board. Don't try and remove the LCD driver board yet. Turn the transmitter over and lift the LCD driver board up to reveal the LCD and digitizer flex cables. With a spudger tool, gently pull back on the tab of the LCD and then the digitizer flex cables to be able to free and remove the two flex cables. Once removed, you are free to remove the LCD driver board away from the rest of the transmitter. Now we move on to removing the audio speaker. That's held down by adhesive, something I don't generally recommend. Anything that's held down by adhesive, I'll always buy a new part because once you use the adhesive, you can never restick it a second or third time. If you need to remove it, just wedge it off with a scalpel. 
Here's what a new speaker looks like. And if you look at the white tape, you can see where the adhesive lies and gives you the intuition on how to wedge it off with a scalpel if you do decide to take it off. If you look at the top and the right hand side of the LCD recess, you'll see where the 2.4 gigahertz coaxial antennas sit. They're held down by adhesive as well. Like I said before, I don't recommend you take them off, but if you do, just simply wedge them off with a scalpel. Here's what a new one looks like. The only time I'd recommend you remove those antennas is if they're faulty. Next is the LCD and digitizer and it's not recommended you do this. If the part is damaged and needs to come off, set your heat gun to 150 Celsius maximum. With fast, long and sweeping strokes, only warm the perimeter of the screen making sure not to spend too long in one spot and creating heat spots because you will damage your LCD. Once you've generated sufficient heat around the screen, gently coax the screen off either with a suction cup or with a razor blade. You will be repeating the heating and coaxing until the screen comes off. I'm gonna stress in this warning, do not do this unless this part is damaged. If you're simply shell swapping, buy a new LCD and save yourself the pain. Here is what a brand new LCD digitizer assembly looks like. Looking at the flip side, you get an idea of where the adhesive tape is on the LCD digitizer combo, and it gives you the intuition in case your damaged LCD needs to come off and you need to use the heat gun method to remove this part. Okay, from here what's left are the toggle switches and pot switches. Before you're in a mad hurry to remove these switches, label them carefully and take note of the color of the top wire of each toggle switch. You'll notice each switch is a little bit lower than the last and I simply numbered from one to five so I could identify where each position and switch is placed. Again, I can't stress enough, take note of the color of the top wire. The left and right slider switches simply fit in a groove and you can lift them off with ease. Now to remove the toggle switches, you will need a toggle switch removal tool or bezel tool. And what you simply do is fit the bezel tool over the top of the top nut and unscrew it like you would a normal nut or screw. You'll repeat the process for all of the switches that sit on the top left and the top right hand side of the transmitter. Please get the toggle switch tool. I've seen people hack away with screwdrivers and they scratch their shells, don't do it. Last on the list is the removal of the pot switches. For this you'll need a 1.5 mil hex and what you'll do is you'll loosen those black knobs and once you've loosened them, you simply lift them off. Once you've removed both black dials, you will grab your toggle bezel switch tool and you'll simply remove that top nut much the same way you did with the toggle switches. Once you've removed all your switches, hopefully you should have something that looks like this. A stack of parts that are well labeled and organized. 